Hey y'all, a while back I uh, decided to bite the bullet and go out and get a few sound docs and see if I can find the best one for the best price. Now if it sounds to you like I'm tired, it's because I am. I've been running all around, going to different stores, trying to find the best product for the best price and testing them all out, returning them, coming back, all that good stuff. So let's get right down to it. Here we have the Bose Sound Docs Series 2. Next we have the Soundfreak SFQ01, followed by the Logitech S715i. So I picked these three because these are the three that are the, the current hot boys on the market right now. They all seem to be pretty comparative, especially in price, you know, give or take. Bose is obviously the most expensive one, and, and then the Logitech's the least expensive, but sometimes that doesn't mean it's better. So let's find out what's going on. But before we do, I do have a wild card here to show you and that is the M-Audio AV40. Now I know what you're gonna say, you're gonna say, hey listen, this isn't a docking device, I can't throw my iPhone or whatever on top of it and have to play music. Well, what we're talking about here is self-amplified speakers that sound good, and I figure why not throw this into the mix, even though it's not exactly like the other ones. So let's get this started. Now, right out of the gate, we have the Bose SoundDock Series 2. So playing with electronics as long as I have, you tend to notice patterns and when some company does something really well you get some serious praise and then you get another crop of people called haters and I know a few Bose haters in fact you may even heard the slogan if it's got no highs or lows it's a Bose I don't know if that's exactly true but I'll tell you what it does have a big ugly brick that it comes with now if anybody knows me they know I absolutely hate power bricks they're ugly, they're in the way, and they should have just built the power into the unit. It's kind of a bait and switch in a way, because you look at the unit and you think, oh yeah, it's going to be awesome, It's look at how sleek it is, and then surprise, there's this big ass brick there. Xbox 360 did the same exact thing, and it drove me nuts. Anyway, back to this. That remote you're looking at right there is sexy. It feels good, feels good in your hand, it's got good rubber feel to it. It doesn't feel like you're going to drop it. There's no fingerprints. It's awesome. They did a real good job with that. Not to mention they added a feature to where you could change your directories from the remote. And that's pretty big. That's You want to go to a different album, different whatever, you can do it from the remote. Now you can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually pushing my thumbs on top of the glossy top unit to see if there's any fingerprints left. This one actually does a good job of not keeping your fingerprints on it. Now here we have the Sound Freak unit with the really obnoxious name. I don't know who's doing their marketing with this stuff, but maybe like the Sound Freak uh, Series 1. I, I like that option as opposed to SFQPX39, whatever. Anyway, as you see right here, what am I pulling out? That is an antenna. Why is there an antenna there? It's because this unit does FM radio, which is a pretty nice feature to have, especially if you're into FM radio. Not me, but it's a nice feature to have. Meantime, what else do we see? How about that? Yet another power brick. Driving me nuts with these power bricks in these units. It's the biggest bait and switch ever. You can see how big it is compared to that Tabasco bottle right there. Anyway, now Sound Freak, that's, that's a new player. I've never heard of Sound Freak before. Tried to look up a wiki on it, couldn't find much about him. And I think this is the only unit they produce. Which means the longevity of this unit is definitely going to be a concern, much less the quality. Now, when I feel it, it feels kind of like some kind of sharper image product. Where you look at it and you think, oh yeah, that's, that's going to look good, that's, gonna, that's classy. And then you kind of feel the plastics and you're like, eh. There's something else going on here that I'm not quite putting my finger on, but it still looks good and I'll give it a chance. That's basically what I did with this unit. Now, this is a very controversial look to this unit. I've talked to a lot of people about this and I personally think it looks all right. I've heard other people tell me that it looks dated and I'm not sure about that, but one thing is for certain, the Bose definitely is a sexier unit. Now, a few seconds ago, you saw the remote. That remote, is horrendous. It is light, it has a glossy top so you get to see your fingerprints on that just like the glossy top on this unit. It's really glossy and whenever you touch it your fingerprints are going to be all over it so that's that's a negative mark right there. Uh, but that remote is just, I just don't even want to touch it. 
That's just the worst part about this thing. However, I do understand why they did that. It's because of this compartment that you're seeing right here. There's the remote, goes in, it's actually magnetized, and then you could close the compartment. And that's kind of a cool little feature, but I think I'd rather have the remote that the Bose has because I just, whenever I see that thing, I just want to play with it. Narrator inserts, wiener joke here, and on to the next review. All right, next we have the Logitech with another difficult to say name. Now this one, the hype machine, is going a full bore on this bad boy. I mean, even the pro sites, they were talking about this thing like it was the cure for deafness. It's just crazy how much hype is going on with this thing. I'll tell you what I don't see, though, on this, and that is a power brick. That's a beautiful thing when it comes to this thing, but that also worries me because that power brick, there's a reason behind it. And with a small form factor that this one's got going on in my history that I know about with Logitech, you just, you don't know. This is all you get as far as your power. You know, it's, it's, at, the, it's at the end and it's still pretty small. Now the remote on this one is pretty decent. Um, it has a nice rubber center and that's, that's cool, even though it is a little on the glossy side. And it is a little on the small side, so it's easy to lose and kind of tough to handle, but it's still pretty good. I, I did like it. Now, I've had a mixed past with Logitech. I've had a few Logitech products, and this company is just basically the definition of hit and miss. You know, they, they do have their own feel to them, and this one definitely has the Logitech feel about it. Even though it is on the heavier side, you could tell a lot about a speaker by how heavy the magnets are in the back. And, and there's this theory going around that says, you know, if, if you can lift it with one hand, it's a crappy speaker. Well, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know the heavier the product, it seems to be the better the, the sound and the better the speaker and the more I could push it. Now, I picked this unit up for 150 bucks at the local Best Buy, and um, I don't know. I, I just don't think that's a good price point for this unit. Online, I've seen it for about 120. I think you're getting there, but to me, it just kind of strikes me as an $80 unit. Finally, we have the M Audio unit. Now, the best way to explain this is if the other units were hamburger, this would be steak. I mean, this is, you know, if, if this was a mullet scenario, the other units would be the party in the back, and this would be business up front. There's no frilly stuff. There's no Bluetooth, there's no FM radio. It's just down to business focus. That's all this is. Just pure kick you in the face focus. Now, if you look there, you're seeing some manuals that, and you can just tell from the manuals, that they're really intense about what they're doing here. And they want you to know about it, and they want to educate you in the meantime. You get some additional things like, uh, you know, the proper cables and, and whatnot, but even better, these are what's known as active speakers. They are not passive, which means that the amp is built in with inside them, and they've got some serious weight. I gotta tell you, these boys are heavy. They're the heaviest out of everything that I've reviewed in this review. That's a good sign, but the odd thing is, is one speaker's heavier than the other. Why? It's because the amp is inside that speaker as well, so you'll notice a, a bit of a weight difference. What I just showed you right there is actually the mats for each speaker. Uh, they're stick-on foam mats that you actually attach to the bottom of the speaker. Now, you can see right there how big these things are compared to that Tabasco bottle. They're really not that big, and you know people always freak out about how small and the bows are and how big a sound you get out of that. Well, they ain't heard nothing yet. This is, this is something that should just be on display right next to the Bose speaker in stores. So you can really see how much these things kick ass over the Bose. I mean, it's, it's shocking. In the meantime, there it is. Uh, it's very few glosses around it. It's only around the speaker holes, which is good. Everything else you could touch and it does a good job with your fingerprints. It's not too bad at all. The front has a glowing volume. Uh, it's kind of got like a Tron effect with the with the glowing blue around the volume button. In the back, you got options galore. You got a ton of inputs. Um, you've got a bass boost. You got TRS inputs, which is the guitar jack, that, that kind of input. And on the front, you have the headphones out, standard jack, and then the auxiliary in standard jack. 
So one thing I would have liked to see on these though is being able to turn off the unit with the volume button up front. So basically to turn these things off you have to flip the little switch on the back. Which is, you know, it's not bad but I would have preferred something on the front. Well that does it for the unboxing so let's head straight to the results. Now coming in at fourth place we have the Logitech unit. Logitech sounded good right out of the gate and I was really impressed that is until I put it up against the other competitors and then it just became embarrassing. Uh, if this is the only thing you buy then you wouldn't know any better and you'd say it's a great unit but other than that it's just not that good compared to the others. Now coming in third believe it or not is the Bose unit. Uh, it did sound good and it was really close to the other ones but unfortunately the lack of features and the power break and the fact that you can't mount an iPhone with a case on it that's kind of a showstopper for me. Logitech was the same way with that. And coming in in second is the Sound Free, the new kit on the block. And because of its extra features and its good overall sound and the front display panel and controls and whatnot, it's just a good choice. Not to mention it's about a hundred bucks cheaper than the Bose. The sound between the Bose and the Sound Freak are really close though. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the M Audio. Now, sure, it may not be fair that this isn't really a sound dock and these are studio speakers, but the sound quality is just flat out amazing. It puts everybody else to shame in this category. And not to mention the fact that it is the cheapest out of all four. It was only 150 bucks at Best Buy. Well, there you have it. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, comment, rate, you know the drill. And be sure to visit my site, filmshank.com, for all your entertainment needs. Goodbye.